So you're buying something on Amazon. Pretty standard. Click here, add to cart. Well, in these four seconds, Amazon already used five different psychology principles and tricks to make you buy. And it's not just Amazon. Every single website and app uses tricks and psychology principles to manipulate you. And that's actually not the problem. The problem is that most people never realize it. And believe me, once you learn these principles, you start to see them absolutely everywhere. For example, I want to start my own online shop to sell, I don't know, prints. So I head over to Shopify. Oh, in this video, I'm going to mention many websites and companies, and these are just examples. This video is not sponsored by any of these. It's actually sponsored by Akiflow, but more about them later. So how I want to create an online store. So I head to Google and I land on this page. This looks like Shopify's regular website, but it's not. Because if I go to Shopify.com, I get to this other different page. This is called a squeeze page, and it's using a psychology principle called Hicks Law. If you look closer, this page has no menu, no navigation, no other links. It's only allowing me to do one thing and one thing only, purchasing the product. The more stuff we are presented with, the more time our brains have to process all that information, and it takes more time. Shopify only has one product, their subscription. And while the regular website looks quite clean, and it's clear that they want me to sign up, when you look closer, you start to see that here I can watch the Shopify story. Here I can log in. Here I can see what's new. These are all things that add to the cognitive load of the page and that don't help me purchase. And you'll see this happening everywhere. This famous supplements brand, same thing. Here's their regular website, and here's their squeeze page when you come from an ad. Companies bring you here instead of their website when you show intent of purchase. And that's why you usually land on these from ads. Netflix even took Hicks Law to the extreme, and they removed everything unnecessary from their website, like the about page, news, and, and basically made their entire website a squeeze page to focus on one thing, joining Netflix. And everything else, well, they shoved it down below. So what does Amazon, the largest e-commerce website and one of the most trusted, and this astrology scammy website have in common? Well, they both use the exact same psychology principles to make you buy their products. Of course, Amazon has reviews. And reviews are an example of the social proof principle, because we are more likely to do something that other people do. And reviews show that many other people have bought this item. So I should buy it too. But you can also leverage this principle in an ethical ways. Here, for example, you have these pop-ups that show that someone somewhere has purchased some product right now. What's the catch? These pop-ups are fake. They are generated by apps like this one called Quickify. You can choose how many fake purchases to generate per minute and even where the fakes are from and what the people buying are called. So yeah, a psychology principle can be used both in ethical and unethical ways. But I'm feeling tired, so let's book a vacation. This is Booking.com, and their genius loyalty program gets you benefits like free breakfast, booking nicer rooms, discounts on bookings, and other stuff. But I noticed something interesting. Their loyalty program gives you these benefits and unlocks different levels, not based on how much you spend on booking, which is the obvious thing, but how many individual bookings you make, even if they are for $5 hostels. Well, this is because booking is a master at using the principle of commitment and consistency. You tend to be consistent with what you did in the past. In this case, the consistency that if I need to book a hotel, I go on booking.com. And in the long run, this is far more valuable than pushing you to spend more on an individual stay. This is the same principle behind Duolingo streaks. So in this channel, the cinematography has never been a strong point, as this terribly framed video testifies. So let's go get some new camera tripods. I'm on this website and oh, a pop-up. It says that I can get this code. And if I paste it at checkout, I'll have a discount. This is great. But wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. If there's a discount, why didn't they just, you know, put the discount in the product? the price? Well, because they know about the principle of reciprocity. If we are given something, anything really, we feel like we owe to give something back. That's why street vendors give you food samples. And that's why they gave me this discount code this way. They are basically saying, I'm giving you this code. I'm giving it to you specifically. It's not a random discount. Now, because they've explicitly given me this, I'm now more likely to reciprocate. 
Use the code and complete the purchase. Amazon does the exact same thing with coupons. Why can't they just add the discount to the price? Why do we have to manually click to get the coupon? Because they want to feel like the discount was explicitly for me. Same thing for all the people selling courses that are giving you a free manual, free PDF, a free guide. This is called the lead magnet. And sure, they want your email so they can send you messages. But the lead magnet is also to build reciprocity with you. But I'm in the mood for learning something new. So I'm signing up to Brilliant. And this this is their onboarding process. Wait, we already know from before we want to avoid the unnecessary and give the shortest path to signing up, completing the action, purchasing. So why this quiz? I mean, sure, this helps personalize the app, but it still doesn't make sense because I haven't purchased anything yet. I've not even given them my email. Well, this is an example of something called sunk cost fallacy. By answering these questions, I have invested time and effort in adding all my preferences. And now, oh, I need to sign up. This is always the critical moment. But now if I leave, all the answers I've given are gonna be gone. They're gonna be for nothing. And this is sunk cost fallacy at play. When we already have invested time and effort into something, we might as well continue and finish it. So if Brilliant put the sign up step before the quiz, they would most definitely see way less people signing up. And all these principles don't stop once we buy or start using something. Actually, it's the opposite. So I made these drawings. They are cool, sure. But if I saw these exact same paintings on random websites, I probably wouldn't buy them. But I made them. I put effort in them. I did it myself. And because of this, they are more valuable. And well, this is the same principle behind the success of Notion, one of the most popular tools for notes, to-dos, and organizing your projects. Notion pushes you to build and tweak and put effort in creating your own productivity system with databases and checkboxes and automations. And surely there are more effective productivity apps out there. But with Notion, you're building a system yourself. And this makes you perceive it as more valuable. This is called the IKEA effect because the IKEA table that you assembled in only six hours with the annoyingly small wrench they give you becomes more valuable to you because you put effort in it. Six hours of it. But there's one category that takes psychological principles to the next level, and that's mobile games. A lot of games allow you to purchase their own in-game currency with real money. It's coins and gems in Clash of Clans, credits in FIFA, dice in Monopoly Go. But think about it, why? Why can't you just buy the thing in the game for some amount of money. Why do you need to add a fake currency in the middle? Well, because this is exactly what casinos do. In a casino, you exchange money for plastic fishes. They could easily let you play with real money at the tables, but having a separate currency in the middle makes you lose track of its monetary value. And games are using this exact same principle called the cashless effect. And a good sign to recognize how much a game wants to trick you into spending more is looking at how complex the system of virtual currencies is. This is where you have gems and coins and tokens for another thing. And you can exchange two gems for one coin. And then you get loot boxes and you can buy bundles. And all of this removes the actual value in real money to make you forget that the incredible skin you're buying for your character actually costs $27.94. And this is not just in the digital world. If you go to Tomorrowland, the music festival, you don't pay for food or drinks with cash. You buy them with the currency of the event called pearls that you have to purchase in advance. How much is a pearl, you ask? Of course, it's one euro and 82 cents. A very weird number that also makes it harder to calculate on the spot what's the value of what you're buying in real money. But something else that you probably spend hundreds of dollars a year on is subscriptions. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, OnlyFans, uh, YouTube Premium. Well, I hate to break it to you, but to all these services, you're just a number, man. And no, it's not a figure of speech. Them, you're literally this number called LTV or lifetime value. So say you have a subscription to Netflix at $10 a month. On average, Netflix knows that they lose, say, 5% of customers each month. So we plug in this formula and we get this. This is how much you are worth to Netflix over the course of your entire lifetime as a customer, your lifetime value. Every single subscription service you use has this number calculated and probably broken down by some analysts in some boardroom by age, country, and in every possible way. Because for them, this is the most important number. Why? Well, with this, Netflix knows before you even sign up what is the maximum amount of money they can spend to convince you to sign up and still make a 
a profit. As long as they spend less than your lifetime value in ads and promotions to make you a customer, they know they're gonna make money. How much? This difference right here. And this formula is also why some subscription services make it so hard to unsubscribe with dark patterns and confusing flows of 20 screens that don't wanna make you leave. Because take a look at what happens to the lifetime value if I increase the churn rate by only 1%. The lifetime value drops dramatically. And this is why they're doing everything in their power to keep you a customer for as long as possible. So all the ads you see around the internet for any subscription are carefully calculated. So when you sign up, they already know how much money they will make off of you on average. And this formula, this basic math, is the reason why everything has become a subscription. So what is the point of this video? I see so many people complain about how we are manipulated by tech companies and how our psychology is used against us. But the reality is that, like it or not, this will keep happening. I don't believe that rules from the government are gonna stop this. And complaining on YouTube, on social media does even less. So instead of complaining, the best thing we can do is actually understand what's really going on. This is what we should teach in schools about technology, not how to make slides on PowerPoint. So you can be aware of what's happening and then take your decisions. Every single product I use has these principles and that's fine. I know it and I'm making conscious choices. I did abandon video games that I liked in the past because I noticed that they were pushing a bit too much on the cashless effect. I refused to buy things that were interesting to me because I noticed that they were doing some practices that were a bit too shady for my taste. I use these same psychological principles I just told you to sell my product, story behind, the behind the scenes of how I make these YouTube videos. So if you want a fun challenge, you can actually go to the link in the description and try to spot all the psychology principles in the story behind landing page. The thing is, I'm aware of what's going on and I can decide for myself. I use technology. I don't like technology, use me. And even the sponsor of this video, Akiflow, uses some of these principles. It's a subscription, so all the math we just saw applies also here. But I can say that the product is actually good. See, when you start to have multiple calendars, notes, emails to follow up on, it quickly becomes a chaotic mess. Well, Akiflow is a solution to keep your life organized in one place. Akiflow integrates with all the apps you already use. So I can take a task or an email from my own tools and block some time in the calendar for it, like this. And voila, my day is planned. You can try Akiflow today with the link in the description. And if you want to learn more, you can even book a one-on-one -on -one call with the Akiflow team. Again, link in the description. Oh, and if you are curious to why tech products are going back to being physical again, adding buttons and knobs after we've made everything a touchscreen, oh boy, do I have a video for you. You can check it out right here. I'm Enrico, and I'll see you.